I first realized the importance of melding school and technology in the 1980s when I designed my instructional framework, the Learner Active Technology Infused Classroom, or LIDIC. And now, finally, more schools have been outfitted with one-to-one -one technology than ever before. So let's talk about blended learning. Blended learning simply means learning through a combination of computer-based engagement for instruction, not just practice, and live interaction with a teacher and colleagues. To me, the key is to take advantage of the best qualities of computer-based learning and live instruction with a teacher to create a powerful learning environment that is actively facilitated by the teacher. I mean, technology provides access to a wealth of learning activities and real-world news, data, and events. It provides access to online field trips, experts, and simulations. It allows students to create models and presentations, and more. The teacher, then, becomes a masterful curator of the learning environment and a facilitator of that learning. That's the power of a blended learning environment. The pandemic took a lot away from us, but it also gave us some gifts that we should not squander. Schools are now outfitted with more technology than ever before. And schools have a felt need to provide individualized, differentiated instruction that should push our thinking regarding the teaching and learning process. Now, our students had to find their way educationally and through life during the pandemic. And while they may have lost out on some teaching situations, I believe they gained a greater love for making their own choices. So let's put that all together and reinvent the classroom experience, shall we? Yep, this is the book I wrote to help schools as a result of the pandemic. It followed closely on the heels of the second edition of my very first book, Students Taking Charge, which was published over a decade ago. But schools are now faced with needing to reinvent instruction and needing to energize teachers so that schools can attract and retain great teachers. I believe we can accomplish all of this in part through creating a culture of professional learning. Everyone loves to learn. No one wants to stagnate, neither students nor teachers. Teachers need ideas, resources, and support. Schools need to embrace them, not for a PD day, but every day. Not for the school day, but 24 seven. Because teachers are thinking about their kids and the work they do with them all the time. So here at IDE Corp, my educational consulting company, and Edquidity Inc., my online products company, we designed a series of online, self-paced, professional learning experiences. These are not courses. They provide continual professional learning opportunities. Each one of these professional learning experiences, or PLEs, is meant to be accessed by all teachers and administrators in a school or district. And school and district administrators can use them during faculty meetings, PD days, professional learning communities, and teacher observations and evaluations to support teachers' continual professional learning. So let's take a look at one of them designed around my book, Reinventing the Classroom Experience, Learning Anywhere, Anytime, as a framework for a blended learning environment. Module one is the housekeeping, if you will, for getting started, helping educators know how the success of modules were arranged and how to use the product. But in there, we ask educators to set up an efficacy notebook. This is a cool tool we invented that should definitely be used with students as well. Because unlike the typical notebook where you're just taking notes, the efficacy notebook wants to move you toward being able to be efficacious, the ability to tackle any problem or challenge and meet with success. And for educators and students alike, that is going to depend on how well you learn the content that's in front of you. You know, one of the dangers of a blended learning environment is that students on the technology side can just shift into autopilot, going from one app to another, watching one video after another, engaging in a website, being present and being engaged with the technology, but not necessarily fully engaged in learning. That's often why teachers feel the need to first teach the lesson. But quite honestly, students aren't engaged there either. So you can use technology to provide instruction. However, after each activity, whether on the technology side or through live interaction with the teacher, such as a lesson or discussion, 
the student writes an entry in the efficacy notebook. This can be paper, digital, video, whatever works best. And so we're using the efficacy notebook in this professional learning experience, or PLE, so that the educator feels what it's like to be a learner. After each activity, you pause to reflect, summarize what you learned, write or talk about how this learning connects to something that you already do. Then write or talk about how it connects to something else that you learned in this PLE, or if you have access to the others, in another PLE. And finally, how you might weave this into your classroom or school. The key is to have learners stop and reflect, retrieving information from long-term memory, which causes learning to solidify. The efficacy notebook is also a great communication tool with the teacher so that the teacher can weigh in on those reflections. So here in the PLE, the teachers are the students. They use an efficacy notebook to capture and reflect upon their learning, and they can use it with their principals, supervisors, and colleagues to spark conversations. You'll see, too, that we offer some tech tips throughout. And whenever you see a paper clip in the upper right-hand corner, that indicates that there's a resource for you. So in this case, we provide a template to develop your own efficacy notebook. I recommend having teachers work through Module 1 on a PD day or a faculty meeting that is used as a launch for establishing this online, self-paced professional learning experience as a key tool to support teachers in learning to design blended learning environments. Now, after Module 1, you have choices. There are 12 different content modules, and you'll see that in setting them up, we model ways in which teachers can use technology to set up their own content-based learning units in whatever learning management system they're using. But let's take a look at one module in detail, and then I'll offer an overview of all the modules, and then I'll talk about how to use these modules in creating a culture of professional learning for designing blended learning environments. I've chosen Module 5, Reimagining the Role of Instructional Activities. Now, you can learn by either watching a video or selecting a text. No matter what your learning style, you have choices. And you'll notice that the choices require only a, a few minutes, after which time we'd like you to reflect in your efficacy notebook. Check-ins help to ensure that you're getting the most out of the module, and you receive immediate feedback after making your selection. If you answer incorrectly, you get a bit of an explanation, and then you can try again. Insight videos are filmed by IDE Corp consultants to offer nuances and extended learning. Now, you'll notice that after explaining what assessment activities might look like, there's an insight video on guiding student self-assessment. Hi, it's Corey again, and I'd like to talk a little bit more today about student self-assessment. Throughout the module, we offer practical strategies that teachers can use immediately in the classroom. Design Time guides teachers in creating materials that they can use in their classrooms. And this is where the educator will have to put in some time in order to design the learning activity. Now, you'll notice that we've provided resources. So in this case, teachers choose the type of activity they would like to design for starters, and they can use any of these resources to get started. So that's how each of the 12 content-based modules go. In a blended learning world, teachers might create computer-based activities for learning and also offer small group lessons. They'll engage students in discussions to solidify learning, and they'll engage students in collaborating with one another to apply learning to real-world scenarios. Blended learning is just that, blended. So let's take a quick look at the topics covered here. In Module 2, teachers will learn to position students for success in a blended learning environment. They'll learn to create a great student rubric, laying out expectations for students. And again, they can access samples that are offered both in English and in Spanish to modify for use in their own classroom. They'll also create protocols and norms for both computer engagement and in-person engagement. In Module 3, teachers will learn about the five P's of PBL, project-based, problem-based, place-based, profession-based, and pursuit-based learning, because technology now provides students with real-time data about all sorts of events and scenarios happening around the world. And we know that when students are challenged with solving real-world problems, they become engaged and dive into learning. So why not leverage technology to do just that? 
Module 4 focuses on teaching in ways that build retention and how to use technology as a partner in that goal. Now, whenever we introduce a new idea that teachers could use in the classroom, as you saw, we either offer resources that are attached, or in this case, we offer a sample lesson. Hey class, it's Ms. Buford. So we're going to take a look at our first benchmark lesson for this unit around pi, circles, and pi, oh my. Now we already discussed module five, instructional activities. So moving on, module six focuses on using technology to provide access for all through five types of videos. Module seven then provides teachers with strategies and tools for facilitating learning, one of the live parts of blended learning. And that's related to module eight, which focuses on formative and summative assessment. Blended learning requires students to take greater responsibility for their own learning, and Module 9 provides teachers with structures and strategies to make that happen. I wrote a book entitled Building Executive Function, The Missing Link to Student Achievement. Executive function are those skills which we sometimes take for granted but shouldn't. Students need the skills of executive function to be successful in school and in life. These skills support social and emotional learning, and are also foundational for learning itself. And that's covered in module 10. In module 11, we tackle the importance of providing each student with what they individually need to be successful. It's all about equity and how to achieve that in the classroom. We introduce teachers to our seven lenses of instructional equity. Parents and caregivers are always an important part of students' learning, so Module 12 addresses how to position them to be partners in the learning process. Module 13 focuses on helping teachers create a priming plan for students to understand their blended learning environment right up front and hit the ground running. So those are the 12 content modules. Teachers can navigate them in any order, whatever topic is important to them or to the school or district. Now, how can school leaders utilize this resource to build a culture of professional learning? Well, first, we recommend that all teachers keep an efficacy notebook to reflect on their own practices and progress in designing a blended learning environment. Principals and supervisors can set goals for the school, department, or grade levels and decide which module should be the current focus. Then, use faculty meeting time to have teachers engage in that module with one another. This PLE can also be used for PD days with administrators or teacher leaders guiding teachers through engaging in specific modules. And when supervisors and principals engage in teacher observations, upon identifying areas for improvement or next steps for innovation, they can lead teachers to a related module. When teachers work in professional learning communities, this resource can provide them with the content they need to take their practice to the next level for increasing student achievement. There are so many ways to use this online self-paced learning experience. And once you enroll, you have two years to access all the modules and resources, so you don't have to try and rush through it. I hope this video has given you an overview of how the online self-paced professional learning experience, or PLE, will be your best partner in designing blended learning environments. For more, I hope you'll subscribe to my blog, podcast, and YouTube channel. And keep up with the latest announcements on my and the company's Twitter feeds. We're here to support you. I wish you all the best in building a culture of professional learning towards building blended learning environments.